like something in me was just like, wait, this is literally the most basic need. And like, I'm the mom and I need to get her water. I did the thing where you like push the call button above your seat, which I've never done. And for me, it's like mortifying. It's like the, the ping goes across the airplane and like a little green light goes up over your seat. And Cora, like when she saw I was going to do it, she's like, no, no okay but I was like no this is like she really was thirsty and it's okay to ask for water and it was my name is Randy Rubenstein and welcome to the mastermind parenting podcast at mastermind parenting we're on a mission to support strong-willed kids and the families that love them you're listening to the mastermind parenting podcast with Randy Rubenstein and welcome to today's show so today I have a fun episode that you have to excuse the sound quality. I think it's going to be decent because I have an amazing, amazing podcast editor named James. Thank you, James, who is going to work his magic. What I'm going to have you guys listen to are two different coaching clips. One is an update from Mama Ann N. And Anne shared a win with me and our group. And I thought it was such a great example of something that I've been teaching you guys in recent podcast episodes, which is all about my nice framework to transform strong willed kids. And what I love about this is when, you know, it really helps us, I think, to be able to. Look at a situation, look at a situation that involves some strong willed behavior. Okay. Our kid showing up, behaving in ways that we're, we wish would stop (laughs) or like just make them stop. And when we're trying to figure out how to help them to be more cooperative, stop making big deals out of little deals, all the different things. We have a framework to go through where I think it helps us to get out of our own head, stop making the situation mean something that it just frankly doesn't. And it just gives us this very tangible, practical roadmap. So this is kind of like the unmeltdown method, right? So you have a kid it starts showing up and you know when that meltdown is coming. You know, you've got that kid, you can tell they're in a mood, they're, it seems like everything is a big deal and maybe you're trying to appease them and it's just getting old really quick. And I think the mistake that we often make is that we either appease them or And so we're constantly like, just like, oh, let me do this and let me do that. And we're trying to fix and solve, or we try to shut it down and then they dig their heels in and then, you know, it just spirals into a meltdown. And I think quite often when we go through this framework, we find that so many times the issue really has to do with the first part of the framework, the first step, which is all about basic needs. And if you want to hear more about basic needs and me going into it more deeply, go back to episode 223 because I really break it down. Basic needs, when I'm referring to basic needs, I'm referring to sleep, fuel, which is food and water, connection. Okay. And so our kids show up acting strong-willed. And first and foremost, we're like, hmm, Am I dealing with an exhausted child here? Because, you know, no matter what I'm trying to make it mean, if I'm dealing with an exhausted child, the bottom line is, is nothing is going to be solved unless I just get this child to bed, right? There's nothing to really talk about as long as I have an exhausted child. They just need, it's just operation sleep. Or do I have a child who is acting out because frankly, they're thirsty or hungry. And I, I I don't need to talk about all the different things. I just need to get them food or water. Or is this a kid that is acting, this is where it gets a little trickier. Is this a kid that has gotten into a habit of getting lots of my attention and the way they they give a bid for connection is 
by seeking negative attention because that's just something that they probably learned when they were around three. And it's a pattern that they've been using for a really long time. They don't even realize they're doing it, but it might just mean that they're wanting more time with me or some gentle touch or just to know that I see them and they matter because we haven't been connecting lately. And so they don't care if it's positive or negative. They're used to it being a negative bid for connection for a really long time. So that's just where they're going. So I think that we accidentally, when we, when we have a child who shows up with this strong world behavior, we accidentally pour gasoline on our fiery kids and we fan the flames rather than helping to extinguish the fiery outburst by just attending to their basic needs. See, so you're going to hear Anne share her story, which is all about her daughter, who's 10, about to spiral out of control and, and saw the strong-willed, you know, strong-willedness happening. They're stuck on a plane. They're waiting to take off. And she sees her child really starting to get in one of those moods that she knows it's like the train has left the station and it's only a matter of time before it's a meltdown or it's just going to be a miserable flight. Okay. And the bottom line was, was her daughter was just super thirsty. And so Anne could have made it mean that, oh gosh, this is going to be a nightmare. We're heading out of town. We're starting the weekend off on the wrong foot. She's going to be acting like this all weekend. This is, I had all these plans. This is going to be a big weekend, but she's just, you know, she's already in one of her moods. This is going to be a disaster. So Anne could have gone down that route. And if she had gone down that route, she may have not just gotten her daughter a glass of water. She would have maybe, look, we're going, you know, she might've started to lecture her. You know, this, I, I don't like your attitude. I don't know what you want me to do for you. You know, she could have gone into, we're stuck on a plane. There's nothing I can do. I don't have a bottle of water. We couldn't bring water through security. You're just gonna have to wait. You know, she could have gone down that whole path. And chances are her daughter would have just become more fiery and it would have turned into a meltdown. And I think that happens so often because we get panicked, especially these kids that we walk around on eggshells because we never know what's going to set them up off. But when we're just looking at it from this really practical way, which is, hmm, is there a basic need? Oh, my child is saying she's thirsty. That's a pretty basic need. Maybe I need to just you know, find my brave, speak up and get her some water, right? Maybe I should just ask for water. Sounds so crazy, right? It sounds so crazy. And when you listen to Anne's message, I love the way she noticed what was happening and what she did and how she was able to extinguish the fire. It didn't need to turn into a meltdown. She she was able to just get that basic need met. She didn't need to make it into a big deal. It was a little deal. Her child was just thirsty. Okay. And I want to point out something that Anne says that you'll hear at the end of her message. And what she says is, I would have never been a person who would push the call button on an airplane, right? I would have never been a person who would push the call button on an airplane. So here she's, you know, she's got a child. She's able to like in the moment, catch herself and say like, Ooh, this is literally the most basic need. My kid's thirsty. Um, I don't have any water. So she's problem solving. So I'm just going to push the call button and step out of my comfort zone and ask for some water. And so, right. That sounds for those of us who are just always assertive, maybe even more so than we need to be a lot of the time, that might sound ridiculous. But I think for so many people and so many women, we don't want to be a bother. We don't want to bug someone. We don't want to be a pain in the butt, right? We don't want to be high maintenance. And so, you know, Anne, she's been practicing some new skills. 
right? She's been knowing that she, you know, her kids, especially her daughter, has really needed her to step up her pack leadership skills. And so she's been practicing how to be a firm and loving pack leader. So she's been finding her voice more and more at home. And this has helped her as she's becoming a woman who speaks up and unapologetically asks for support, like a glass of water for a daughter on a plane. It seems so simple. And I love this so much because it's an example, right? It seems so simple. And yet it's an example of another woman who's using her voice, maybe in a teeny tiny way, but also it's always going to equate to larger ways too. And this is why I believe practicing new parenting skills translates to personal growth. Always. You're practicing these new skills at home. And before you know it, you're practicing these new skills out in the world, right? Strong will behavior is simply smoke alerting us that it's time to problem solve. We have to advocate for our kids. If we don't have to make little deals into big deals. We can go through the NICE framework. We can start by assessing the basic needs. Quite often, we will solve the problem there as Anne did. So I want you guys to listen to Anne's message and then my response to Anne, where I point out lots of different things and, of course, go in on (laughs) several tangents um, and tell some different stories. And my hope is, is that just as we talk about this more and more and more, what you're going to do in your life is when you start to see the smoke of strong-willed behavior, okay, when you start to see that smoke, you're going to start just naturally going through the NICE framework, assessing basic needs, First and foremost, before we go into investigating that it could be something, because sometimes it is something beyond basic needs, and quite often we solve the problem just in the end, just with the basic needs and making sure that they are met. So enjoy the coaching and I hope it helps you in some small way. Hey everybody, I've uh, been just catching up on boxer stuff. Um, I took the kids down to New York City for like a long weekend um, and just got back. And I just wanted to share a story because I was like, there's, I don't know, there's nobody else I would share it with this, but this group. But I was just thinking um, of you guys and I was like, oh, I think they might appreciate this. So yeah, so I was just me flying down with the kids and of course our like flight was delayed and it's it's like a short flight and uh it's like a little windy so like they didn't really announce it but they kind of just weren't doing the whole drinks and snacks thing and Cora was she like asked me a couple times for some water because she was like thirsty and I kept saying you know, that I would flag down the, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the word, but you know, the employee that brings the drinks and they just like weren't coming. And she was getting like louder and angrier. And, you know, my natural reaction is that just like, it just floods me. And I was just thinking like, just, she needs to stop. Uh, And that like, she's got to know that I, I can't just make water appear and she needs to just deal. And I was like starting to like get into that sort of angry panic mode. And then like something in me was just like, wait, this is literally the most basic need. And like, I'm the mom and I need to get her water. And it wasn't like that turbulent or anything. The seatbelt signs were all on, but I, I did the thing where you like push the call button above your seat, which I've never done. And for me, it's like mortifying. It's like the the ping goes across the airplane and like a little green light goes up over your seat. 
And Cora, like when she saw I was going to do it, she's like, no, no, it's okay. But I was like, no, this is like, she really was thirsty and it's okay to ask for water. And it was the stewardess. That's the word came and like brought water and it's it all sounds so simple. And like Cora was like immediately like so grateful, even though she was like so embarrassed and was like, made me ask like it was for me. Yeah. And was immediately like, thank you so much. And yeah, such a small thing, but I was like, I don't know that I would have even thought to do that like before this program. And it's like so necessary that I do it because they never, they never ended up bringing anything. So I'm starting to ramble a little bit, but yeah, I just thought of you guys and I wanted to share. Thanks. And I'm glad you did share that here. And I love it so much because it's so basic and it's, it's, it just proves a point, right? It just proves a point so beautifully how often we make things so much more complicated than they need to be, right? Because of our own stuff and like pausing for so many applause for you because you're like, uh, yeah, it's just not that complicated. Like it's the most basic need. She's dying of thirst. She's listening to her body. She's asking for what she needs. She's pushing me to be her pack leader to advocate and help her get what she needs. She trusts me to help her get this basic need met. She's asking for my support, you know, like, and I can focus on her, her shitty delivery and her shitty ask, and I can make it mean something that it frankly just doesn't, you know, or I can just model what it looks like when you're listening to your body and you want to get a basic need met, how you can alert the person that is capable of helping you meet that basic need. And then you can allow them to show up and support you. Hmm. Okay. Like, like not a big deal. Like that is literally what the flight attendant is here to do. You know how many crazy requests she probably gets? She sees a button, a call button on and she shows up and then it's just like, can we get some water and we're polite and nice? I mean, you don't say any of this, but you're just modeling it. And, you know, can I get some water? Can I, can I bug you for some water? Sure, no problem. It's her pleasure. She's in the service industry. She's like, that's easy, right? Yeah, I love that. I love that. And now you just modeled some really critical skills for your daughter. And it was super relevant, like not a big deal. Ask for water, let people support you. You don't have to sit here in gripey discomfort. You can just push the call button and politely ask for the water and then appreciate it when they bring you it. You know, I mean, how often it's just like, how often are we making little deals like this into big deals in our minds. And then, you know, because if, let's just say, if you would have focused on the wrong thing instead of getting to the root, what's underneath this behavior, right? If you would have focused on the wrong thing, and then next thing you know, Cora would have you know, not felt supported and dug her heels in more, And then she would have been acting surly and pissed off and jerky. And I think you said this is on the way to your vacation. And then you start your, your, you know, what could be a lovely vacation off on the wrong foot. And now we have a surly shut down kid who feels like they're on opposing teams, (laughs) right? Like it can so easily domino into the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. I mean, once those light bulbs about those basic things start to go off. This happens for all of us. What ends up happening is you'll be out, you know, once your kids are, you've really gotten the memo. And so your kids are doing better and y'all feel like you're a team and there's, you know, the, the meltdowns over the little deals are less and less and less. And you guys are kind of moving and grooving in the right direction. What you'll start to notice is 
you'll be out in the world and you'll see parents who haven't gotten this memo, who are doing it the way that we were all doing it before we started getting these ahas. And you'll see kids acting out, shutting down. You'll see the parents handling it all wrong. And it will be so, it's so difficult because then all of a sudden something happens in all of us where it's like, we all, we want to like advocate for all the children. And, um, and it's like everything in your body, not to tell that parent you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong, which would never be welcomed or helpful. But I've seen it time and time and time again, stories come back to me about, oh my gosh, I was at this thing or I was at my kid's basketball game. And, oh my gosh, you should have seen what this parent was doing. You start to just notice all the times that things are going wrong when they just don't need to go. It's like, it, it, stop, just stop. This can this doesn't need to turn into a World War III meltdown. It just doesn't. So it's so cool. Randy Rubenstein, and this is the Mastermind Parenting Podcast, where I share tips on how to solve any parenting problem. If you're in an absolute parenting shitstorm right now, I gotcha. Do this now. Go to our website at mastermindparenting.com and click on the live assessment button where you can schedule a live call to discuss your issue. My team is going to point you in the right direction, match you up with the best resource because we've been where you are and know that you want the tools that work ASAP. Don't worry, we got you. You can also go to mastermindparenting.com forward slash live dash assessment. That's live dash assessment. Get on our calendar right away. You will hook up with a live person to begin helping you immediately. And for all of you who are like, well, what do you do? I'll tell you what you do. When you see parents doing it wrong and you're like right next to them and you're, and they're kind of aware that you're there and you're aware, whatever, you focus on the kid. So you do something like, like, like I, there was a story of like when Corey and I, we were, we were at this place where you had to get a blood draw, you know, one of those labs, like a quest lab. And we were waiting in the waiting room and there was this little girl, she's probably like six or seven. And mom was sitting there just like on her phone. And the little girl, you could just tell was just super busy and she was kind of a mess. And I mean, at some point, I think she like, and it was like still during like coat, like we were still masking. So it was like not early, early in COVID, but you know, when the world was just kind of opening back up. And this little girl like licked the chair or did something. She was like, just, she, she was just like pushing her mom's buttons right and left. And the mom was just like so annoyed with her and just really didn't want to deal with her. The mom just seemed exhausted to me and, um, and pretty checked out. And so I caught myself judging the mom. And then I thought what you focus on grows. And so I, I, I just kind of like smiled at the little girl as she was like looking for ways to get her mom's attention. And I just thought, I'm just going to give her some positive attention. So I just like smiled at her and she kind of made eye contact with me. And I just thought, what can I notice about this little girl? And she, you could tell she had dressed herself and there was a whole outfit going on. And I was like, what is this out? Are you like, like, are you a professional? How'd you come up with this outfit? It's amazing loving that shirt with those leggings. I mean, you thought, did you put it together? Did your mommy dress you? And she kind of looked at me kind of coy and she's like, me? I was like, whoa, you have a gift. And you have a real gift. This is my daughter who's in college. She would be all about this outfit. It, you know, you look amazing. And she kind of smiled. And then the mom, so I'm pointing out that heard something positive about her daughter, which, you know, come on, not going to lie. We all, it's fun when somebody's like recognizing your kid in a positive way. And then the mom, I just like saw the mom's energy soften. 
And then the little girl, you know, she just like kind of started doing something else. And, you know, so now I've become a friend and I just, you know, it's kind of smiling and just like bringing warm energy. And that is what I basically do. I mean, I did it in a yoga class not long ago with a mom next to her college age daughter who I could just tell that like after the yoga class, she was just being kind. I heard her just like, just kind of being nasty towards her daughter daughter and I saw her daughter with the head down or whatever and I was right next to them I was like oh I'm so jealous how do I get my daughter to come to a yoga class with me it's amazing so beautiful and before you know it we were engaging in conversation and the daughter was like oh I drove in I just go you know to college an hour and a half away I was like you drove in to go to yoga with your mom I was like oh I love that um I was like so incredible I was like in that class oh my gosh like I love this class so much it's like my Sunday morning people call it yoga church I was like I love it but the thought of getting to come and do it with one of my kids would be like it would be like a gift I was like I need your tips amazing mom how did you get her to come to do this you know so then I was just like celebrating them because the truth is is I was in their business it was it was bugging me that you know I mean I can't help it I do I it is not my business the way other people parent their kids especially when they haven't raised their hand and asked for my support or help and I do care about the kids right anyway I'm not sure how I just got into that whole segue but you guys keep these stories coming they inspire me I love them Wow. Didn't you love hearing Anne talk about her story and celebrate her win? I know it can feel so cringy to pause for applause for yourself. We do that often in our mastermind because it feels so awkward. I want us to get less awkward in pausing for applause for ourselves. I think that that is one of the greatest self-care practices any of us can take part in. So today I'm pausing for applause for Anne. And if you like Anne also are the person that would never think to push the call button on an airplane or some other version of, I'm not going to be a pain in the butt. I don't want to make waves. I want to be easy breezy, go with the flow. Chances are you also struggle with your kids being those relentless kids and they badger you and they have no quit and they just won't stop and oh, you're exhausted and it's just so hard to be consistent and to follow through and boundary schmoundries. If all of these things are coming up for you, they were coming up for Anne as well. And Most moms that I know, this is the case. So this is what I'll help you with. I will help you. I want you to learn my framework. I want you to go to my website, mastermindparenting.com. Look at the compare programs. There's three different ways that you can learn our framework so you can start pausing for applause for yourself, find your voice, get better with the whole boundaries and consequences, and most importantly, transform your strong-willed kids because this is what they need from us so that they are able to transform their strong will because they've learned new skills, right? We focus on the skills rather than the strong will. And uh, so there's three ways you can work with me and you can learn the framework. Now, one, We have a coach week live, which is a week of coaching with me live. It's coming up. So go check out all the details, mastermindparenting.com, compare programs, go to coach week live. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to coach you. I'm going to teach you my framework. Another way you can do our self-study program, have access to all of our content. It's our mini masters self-study program, or you can join our basics boot camp which is our white glove coaching experience where you work with me and my whole team and we hold your hand and I teach you the framework. And in 12 weeks, you have a completely different result in your household. So go to mastermindparenting.com, look at the compare program section to figure out which option is best for you. And don't procrastinate this, you guys. This is too important. This is your life. This is your kid's life. 
I can teach you this framework. It will transform your kid and your life. So take action. You got this. Thanks for listening today, guys. I hope you picked up some tips, tools, maybe some baby steps for creating more balance and boundaries in your life. And I just wanted to let you know, if you want to continue moving the needle forward in creating this for yourself, having a happier household, I want you to go to my website and check out mastermindparenting.com. We have three beginning programs. And if you need some accountability and more support, then please look for the one that would be a good fit for you. Um, And as always, we're on all the social channels under Mastermind Parenting. On Instagram, it's mastermind underscore parenting. Um, And, you know, periodically I do pop up on different Instagram lives, Facebook lives, where I give you teaching and coaching. And I love engaging with you live to help you help your strong-willed kids so that they can feel better because when they feel better, they do better. And, um, I love, love, love getting to know you guys. So thanks for listening. If you like this podcast, please don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Super, super appreciative.